Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Behe. I'm not a medical doctor, but I play one in this video. Today, we're talking about bacteria, those tiny invisible bugs that can make us sick and sometimes help make us better. Thanks, Jane. Valuable research is being done on these single-celled microbes. In fact, scientists are trying to develop clever ways to use bacteria in targeted medicine. Here's one way. Suppose this person has a tumor. The idea is to take human-friendly bacteria that are preloaded with cancer-killing agents and inject them into the patient. These bacteria are self-propelled active swimmers. A guidance system directs the bacteria to the exact location of the tumor. The bacteria attack and destroy only the cancer. The surrounding healthy tissue remains unharmed. The key to the whole plan is to equip the bugs with these precision engineered magnetic crystals. The crystals need to form a row. This enables the crystals to interact effectively with an external magnetic field. The controller then maneuvers the bacteria to the destination. It's a great idea, but there are two big problems. First, no one has been able to synthesize tiny crystals like these. Second, even if they could, no one knows how to get such crystals inside a microscopic bacterium. Well, let me tell you a little secret of the cell. Magnetic bacteria aren't some futuristic science fiction concept. They're real, they're here, and these amazing bacteria manufacture the magnetic crystals on their own without the help of any scientists or engineers. This is an actual photo. Meet the magnetotactic bacterium, one of the absolute marvels of the microbial world. We usually think of nanotechnology that can control creatures as Star Trek kind of stuff. But magnetotactic bacteria don't live such a glamorous life. They live here, on Earth, in murky water. Life in the swamp can be perilous for these little bugs. If they swim in water that has too much oxygen, it can be fatal for them. So they have to swim down to a depth that has little oxygen. Bacteria don't have eyes, and navigating muddy water can be difficult. Now, here's where the crystals come in. Amazingly, the magnetic particles align with Earth's magnetic field. This guidance system enables the bacterium to navigate to a favorable environment. Homing pigeons, sea turtles, salmon, frogs. These are among the many animals that also use Earth's magnetic fields for orientation when they travel. So precisely how do the bacteria living in swamp water make these magnetic particles? Well, Within these microscopic bio-wonders is a factory. And I mean a real factory. When you peer inside a bacterium, it's hard to make out the complex micro-machines and systems that make it function. So for the moment, let's portray the components inside this bacterium in a way that all of us can relate to. This is the Magnetotactic Bacterium Crystal Factory. It has a digital command center, quality control, reactors, transporters, and more. It begins with acquiring the raw materials. The bacterium pulls the iron ions from the surrounding water. Then the process begins. Let's see how it works. First, the iron goes through a regulator. Iron comes in two chemical flavors called Fe2 and Fe3. A specific ratio of the two is required. So this machine electronically converts the iron to proportions of two Fe3 for every one Fe2. Now, a major problem has to be addressed. Excessive amounts of iron are toxic to a cell. Fortunately, the factory has a hazardous materials solution. 
This is a magnetosome. Its protective membrane encloses the iron. When we peek inside, we can see that the amazing magnetosome is a nanoreactor. The iron particles are grown and fashioned into these astonishing magnetite crystals. Finally, these forklift guys transport the magnetosomes. They're carefully placed along a special filament that provides a guideline to achieve optimal magnetic alignment. So, it's a very impressive factory. But it's all made possible by what is the key component for every modern factory. The command center, the bacterium's DNA. All instructions for the entire operation originate here. And what is truly remarkable is that the final dimensions are all within specific tolerances. Oversized, undersized, or misshapen crystals would impair magnetism. But thanks to their precise shape and alignment, the bacteria successfully navigate to healthy depths. So there you have it, a factory that would rival any modern day fabrication plant. But wonders like magnetotactic bacteria are fairly recent discoveries. Today, we're able to peer inside tiny microbes. Before modern microscopes like this one, our knowledge was limited, and scientists thought bacteria were just run-of-the-mill squirmy bugs. With new technology, we can now more fully appreciate the complexity and incredible features of magnetotactic bacteria, and many other kinds too, like this one. Some bacteria have a flagellum, which is like an outboard motor on a boat. The flagellum has highly advanced components, a rotor, stator, drive shaft, a universal joint, bushings, even a clutch and brake. The amazingly efficient motor of the flagellum can spin at up to 100,000 revolutions per minute. And check this out. Some bacteria have guns. Ammunition shot from these barrels has enough force to pierce the membranes of other cells. And the guns can shoot up to 60 molecular bullets per second. Who knew bacteria were so well equipped? I mean, it's astonishing, but it gets better. These tiny creatures have a huge role in the well-being of our planet, and they touch each of our lives in ways that might surprise you. Stay tuned. Good luck with that, Nancy. Elon, what about you? Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a car maker, but not just any kind of car. It's going to be electric. We won't have to use gas and all the air pollution will go away. Ooh. Okay. Elon, very interesting. And Steven, what about you? Have you thought about what you want to do? I want to make phones. Phones that can do anything. You can play music and watch cartoons and even call Batman. Wow! wow. Steven, that sounds very ambitious. Okay. Uh, Michael, what about you? I want to be a biologist. And do what? I want to grow super bacteria that eats poop, turns it into methane gas to run electric power plants. Ew. Ew. That's gross. Okay, Who, who's next? You might not appreciate bacteria in the same way you do a smartphone or an electric car, but bacteria are amazingly complex and can be surprisingly useful. And yes, there actually are large dairy farms powered by manure. The valued cow chips are rounded up and then sent to a large holding tank. Inside, manure-eating bacteria convert it to methane gas that fuels an on-site power plant, which produces more than enough electricity to power the entire farm. The list of beneficial bacteria is quite long. These bugs eat plastic waste materials produced by humans that have littered the oceans. Some engineers are trying to harness bacteria to potentially replace silicon chips in computers. 
using the bugs to make smaller and faster processors. And then there's the friendly bacteria that benefit our health. They're essential to good digestion and healthy skin. Humans are composed of about 40 trillion cells. About the same number of bacteria reside on or inside each of us, perhaps much more. Although, because bacteria cells are so small, altogether they weigh only about 1 300th of an ounce. Finally, there's this remarkable bacteria discovered by a Danish scientist. It actually cleans up um, odoriferous mud. The harbor had pungent smells originating within the mud. The scientists found that the odor could be deleted by a community of collaborative bacteria. Thousands of bacteria form a wire that conducts electricity from the oxygen-deprived lower layer up to the oxygen-rich surface. The electric current allows bacteria deep in the mud to eat organic waste and remove the smelly hydrogen sulfide. Folks, you can't make this stuff up. Bacteria are incredible. It's true, some types of bacteria are harmful to humans but countless others are superheroes of the microbial world. All this raises an obvious question. How did bacteria become so diverse and so ingenious? That's coming up next. Let's talk some more about factories. And what's cooler than a car factory? Robots in perfect sync, tons of steel being shaped and welded together, and hundreds of cars coming off the assembly line every day. And isn't it interesting to think about how one wrong keystroke can make the whole thing grind to a complete stop? Then, another to fully restore it. No, we haven't changed the topic from bacteria. But I do want you to think about what makes a huge coordinated operation like this possible. Now, back to the bugs. As we've seen, they can do very clever things. But the truth is, bacteria aren't smart. They don't have brains. They can't think or reason. Bacteria can do many remarkable things because they are pre-programmed with goals and purposes. Basically, bacteria are nanobots. In the same way that human computer code enables sophisticated mechanical robots to perform important jobs, bacteria have written code in their DNA that provides the instructions to do things, like manufacture magnetic crystals, so we can see that even bacteria are autonomous, highly developed life forms. But how did they get that way? Bacteria have been around since life began on Earth. Through the ages, variations have cropped up in their DNA. These are called mutations, and they can alter the structure of a cell. According to Darwin's theory, these small changes are what drive evolution. What's more, Darwin theorized that with myriad mutations over vast stretches of time, enormous changes occurred. Bacteria with helpful mutations survived. Bacteria with unhelpful mutations were eliminated by natural selection. Mutations can cause small changes. That's easily observed in nature. But here's the critical question. Can a sequence of many mutations added together over time result in a major gain of function? What might such an evolutionary process look like for our old friend, the magnetotactic bacterium? How did it evolve by tiny steps? Back in the days before they could produce magnetite crystals, ancient bacteria might have been swimming along, foraging for food wherever they could find it. Then, over a vast stretch of time, 
a long series of unguided mutations supposedly occurred. Our imagined result is that the bacteria gained the ability to accumulate large quantities of iron. Then, another long series of unguided mutations resulted in the magnetosome membranes to hold the toxic iron. After yet another long series, voila! A magnetite crystal was produced. That's impressive, but the problem is that, so far, none of this would be helpful to the bacteria. Many eons later, more crystals show up. But they're of no value either, unless they're lined up. Finally, the transporters arrange them on the filament, and the magnetic fields can be accessed. But you can see that it's not until all the pieces are in place and fully functional that there is an actual benefit to the bacteria. Color me skeptical. I'd like to suggest to you that the parts of the magnetotactic bacterium did not develop gradually over time through random evolution. Rather, this amazing little creature has all the characteristics of deliberate, intelligent design. At the core of every modern factory is sophisticated computer programming. Even a tiny error can gum up the works. By the same logic, as we look at the astonishing factory that science has discovered within bacteria, we realize it too requires very specific instruction from its DNA code to build and run its machinery. In Darwin's time, the bacterium was thought to be a very simple organism. There didn't appear to be much to it. So back then, it was easy for scientists to imagine it could arise randomly, without much difficulty. But as science advanced, we have discovered that bacteria are unfathomably complex. That functional complexity is overwhelming evidence that these nanobots were purposely, intelligently, designed. The topic of bacteria is immensely broad. To learn more about it, check out the articles, videos, and discussions on my website. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time for more Secrets of the Cell.